To a normal engineer, this is witchcraft. Mm -hmm. This is something he wouldn't do. It's not in his textbook. But, when but, he really needs to be engineering from the vacuum. Right, but you're not doing this for the chat group, are you? You're doing this to try and get a, a bigger business or whatever that's going to be. I'm doing this for general mankind. Okay. To get out the knowledge yeah. to general mankind out there. But you're hoping, I would imagine, that, that something, somebody responsible is going to take this and change the way we do it. And do something with it because... And, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We're not, not, we're not here to insult any engineers right. or say your theory doesn't work because their theory does work. Mm -hmm. You know, I've engineered my entire life with their theory from the textbook. And I can tell you it can make the power meter spin. I wanted to look at the other end. Yeah. I wanted to look at the end that Tom Bearden was talking about. What is Tom writing here? Is Tom wasting his time writing? That was my question. No, he's not. This stuff actually does work exactly the way Tom Bearden says it works. I'm not here to insult engineers, once again. I'm just here to try to say, hey, gee, guys, let's have a look at this. What's this doing that we're missing? Can't we engineer this into our circuit some way to make my transistor radio last like 40 hours more or 100 hours more? Or, gee, when that battery's dead, can I just take the one out of here and put it over here? No, you've got nobody that's willing to stop their normal routine and really look what's going on around them. Yeah. They want to go down to the local stand and get some cheese for free. The internet is about freedom of speech. Sharing ideas back and forth, back and forth. But you can see that it's been totally infiltrated by naysayers and skeptics and people that want to bring about the whole total socialization of this without any of the benefits of it. you got to be able to grow your, grow your own food in the, the future, pump your own water, you know, and, and make sure that when you're pumping that water that another battery is being recharged at the same time you're, you're taking your bath. You know, we're trying to do this currentless. We're not trying to use very much current doing this at all. In fact, the absence of the current, the more the vacuum adds energy. The more current you put into the circuit, the less the vacuum energy comes in. This is about the change in society. Can mankind become efficient? That's what we need to know. So this is sort of a little test. Here's the information. What can you do with the information? Some people are gaining knowledge and learning. Others, it's just a hobby. It's frightening. It's very frightening to know that we don't have these energy sources and that we're running out of fuel and oil, supposedly. I don't think so, but, you know, and, and that we're warming up the earth, that's poppycock. This has been, these cycles on the earth have been going on for thousands of years all controlled by the sun out there. It's all about magnetic fields and what the magnetic fields yeah. do. On one side you see the ice caps melting, on the other side you see the ice caps growing. Who's on first here? <laughs> That's what I want to know is who's on first? Does it work or doesn't it work? Can we do something with it, or do we have to throw it aside and start over? 
That's my question. I've done the best I could do. I've given them the most information I could give, you know, from all my years of research. And now it's just, I leave it up to them. You either take the leap or just face the future. That's all you're getting from me, Tony. <laughs> all right. Very good, John. You're probably going to put it in there, too, aren't you? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to cut it so, and mangle it so badly that uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's going to make you say something else. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to be a globalist and a global warmer. No, I mean you, you got Wait, it right there I, in a nutshell. Yeah. You have the whole thing in a nutshell. Here. You have this right at your fingertips. If you don't choose, and don't complain about the price. I spent 40, almost 50 years spending my money to figure it out. You're getting a deal if I say 75 bucks for the book. Yeah. Think about the guy that's filming. He had not asked for a dime. What's going on here? Today you have access to all this information and you have the internet. But they're abusing the internet so bad that they're just going to take it away. Then you're not going to have any information. You better hope that you copied all the stuff off on a piece of paper and that you have it so you can do it. I think we've done our best. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. And there's more. We're growing. You know, and we're sharing a little bit more each time. We're not hiding anything. There's nothing in here. You don't see any black boxes on top of anything. You can see the circuits right in front of you. You can see the wires. Oh, clear. <laughs> hey, Rick's got it in a clear plastic box. Okay, there's nothing hidden here. We don't have to hide anything because we're not frauds about anything that we're doing. And the thing about these kits is you... You build them yourself, mm -hmm. or you could make it yourself. You can go to the store and buy it, buy the parts wherever you want to buy them. And it'll work. On the um, on the internet groups that you participate in and that that you run, Rick, about how many people um, are 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 in these groups? Well, the uh, we started off with a Bedini Monopole Three group. Uh, or Medini Monopole group, and we had hundreds of people first year, and then that eventually we made into a, an advanced group, and now we have a similar group called Medini Monopole Three, and there is maybe 700, 800 people on that now. It just grows every every day. More people join that group, and most of them don't participate, but. Um, a lot of them do, and they uh, replicate uh, their version of these. You know, when I say their version, they get their parts. You know, they get their uh, parts from wherever. They build their motor whatever size, and then they post the results. Um, so we have people all over the world. Um, and then, of course, the group is uh, open to the public, so everyone can view it without even joining the group. So there's I estimate there's thousands of people watching that, and we're trying to what we're trying to do there is give the basic circuit without all the advanced stuff, so that everybody can focus in on that, understand it, which it sort of makes it easier on me. I don't have to answer all these questions all over the place about every different circuit. We've got to start off the basics, and once you understand, um, what we want to do there is show two different things that you can restore uh, ruined batteries or, or, desul or desulfate batteries. Um, and then we also want to show how uh, there's two energies, as John's been talking about. Once you get to that point of really understanding there are really two energies and how they work, then you'll naturally know how to move on. Uh, but most people just are have this gold rush fever, right, John says, yeah. where they're- Gold th fever. Gold fever. They're, they're just, they're just impassioned. They want free energy now, 
and they can't listen to any instructions. So they'll come in, they'll see the basic circuit, and they'll say, which is just this right here, you know, and they'll say, well, I can improve upon that. You know, it's a transistor and a diode and a, and a resistor, and we had a, another diode off here um, to go to the charging battery. So that's the basic circuit. circuit. So that's the basic circuit with an inductor, with a coil, um, you know, and then the motor. Well, they want to do this and that and say, well, this is how you improve it. This is, and they spend all, all their time trying to figure out well, how to improve it. Well, one thing that's very important here, Rick, is it's already as simple as it can get. Yeah. So why? There's, there's nothing difficult about this at all. You just follow directions and it'll charge your battery. Yeah. You don't have to be an Einstein to make this. Einstein doesn't work here. This is simplicity. The simplest form. This is the easiest way to show what the energy is. We couldn't make it any more simple. But most people are looking for sophistication. As I said, there's an old saying from Paraguay. I put all the gold, all the silver around the wheel for the eye of the ignorant. So he misses the whole concept of the simplicity. Yeah. Who, who, uh, who, who made that statement? Paraguay is 1269 AD. And, and he built some... He built a permanent magnet motor while he was at war. In 1269? Yeah, and he said... He, he wrote it in a thesis. He said, I dressed up everything so that so that your eye is focused on this blue capacitor or this gold spot over here and you miss the whole workings of the motor. And he called it the eye of the ignorant. And, and see this is the thing. It's quite profound because nobody ever duplicated it except for Lee Bowman. So what I've observed over the last three years is John has laid it out again and again, the basic points, and people just miss it. They just go off here and there and uh, make these demands and what have you. Well, I'm not politically correct, Rick. <laughs> you know, uh, my, my I's aren't dotted all the time, and the T's aren't crossed, <laughs> and every once in a while something's misspelled or the punctuation mark's in the wrong spot, but you know what? If you don't understand street language, what are you doing here? You've heard the saying, book smart, life dumb. Mm -hmm. But there's um, all sorts of people, uh, engineers all over the world are um, replicating these. Uh, not everybody posts their results. You know, they, they send things privately on emails and that. But you have people who are, you know, kids building these for science fairs as the original schoolgirl, 10 years old. Um, or you have people who are, you know, the most advanced engineers. Um, in fact, I, I brought this exact motor around with me in a box around the whole country um, this, this year, this winter. And I showed this on campuses all across the country, and I met people who were PhDs um, to, you know, your basic college student. And they were fascinated, as, you know, we discussed that. So a lot of these people have joined the groups and, and uh, or, you know, replicated these things. So there are a fair measure of number of people who have, who have uh, moved on from the basics. But this is, this is all that's, um, all that's necessary is to know what the energy is, as John's describing the, the boards there. And, uh, it's sort of a primordial energy. Yeah. It's like before electricity. Precursor. It's like, Precursor. Earth, like earth currents and all yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and, and this kind of energy likes to see a high impedance. It absolutely does everything opposite. Yeah. Of what the conventional energy does. Yeah. And as Tom points out, Tom Beard points it out very precisely that what we're looking at right there that's coming out of the wall is just a waste product. Yeah, that's what he's measuring waste. When you talk about negative energy, is that 
on a par with positive energy and they're both subsets of precursor 